Good evening, good evening. Coming up on the big show this week, we'll be finding out about the brand new production from Brass Neck Theatre Company. Joe McNally from Action Ability Belfast will also be here telling us about their latest production. We'll have live music in the studio from Benedict Morris and Cormac Crummy, and we'll be out and about at the Family's First Awards. But starting us off, some live music from singer-songwriter Paul Cahalan.
Right, we're going to find out now about the brand new production from Brass Neck a Theatre Company. It opens in the MAC on the 29th of May and it's called Something in the Air. The two ladies who are starring in the show, Mary Jordan and uh, Rosina Brown, join me now in the studio. Ladies, welcome. Mary, we're going to start with you. Tell us a little bit about the background to this show. Okay, the, the background is basically the burning of Bombay Street in West Belfast in 1969, where well, basically overnight, um, loads of families just lost their homes and the story begins there. Uh, a lot of people who lost their homes that night and some people lost their lives that night as well, um, had to move. Uh, some people were housed with their, their families, neighbors, relatives. Uh, but our story begins where some people were moved down south to a camp in Gormanston, mm -hmm. in County, County Meath, which happened a lot. And basically the whole story unfolds from the night people lost their, their, their homes and the street was raised to, to, to the ground. I know you can't really tell us too much about your character, no. but give us a little flavour of, of what she's like. Well, my character, uh, Lauren, starts working with migrant workers, asylum seekers, refugees, and she finds out about this camp in Gormanston. She had never realised, like a lot of people won't know, that uh, people were refugees from the north. Yeah and were placed in these camps until it was deemed safe enough for them to return home and uh, you know they would return to Belfast to, to, to rubble yes yeah uh, basically and that would have happened a lot over that summer yeah the summer of 69. Even though you are dealing with some pretty horrendous stories mm -hmm. in this play there is some light relief as well there is some funny moments as oh, well. Oh there, there are some very very funny moments um, my character decides to to speak to somebody who lived in Bombay Street and, and experienced experienced um, her, her house um, going up in flames. So I come to Belfast to visit Rosie, who is a very colourful, uh, very gregarious, garrulous character uh, who has lots and lots of stories about Belfast before. Yes. Uh, 69 and after 69 so you, you get that con contrast there but a lot of very very funny memories uh, and she's very forward about telling you yes, all, yeah. of, all of these things in fact she's hard to stop <laughs> <laughs> well we'll bring her in now Rosie tell us all about your character then what's she like Rosie's a funny character something she'll be talking away about something and I'll be oh I know what you're saying kind of thing, do you know one day, and I'll just ramble on and then I go, do you hear me rattling on? But um, yeah, it's just funny, funny to play and, and I'm really enjoying it, you know. That's a pretty big part, you've lots of long monologues to do in this, haven't you? Indeed, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and this is not the easiest stage for remembering things, <laughs> especially when you've kind of been housebound for a lot of years, you know, you haven't been, been out there as such. And, but I've found myself falling back into it again. And because I like the wee character, I know there, there are people like her that I live with. I'm probably like that myself anyway. Because will I tell you something? I remember one day, you know, so yes, it's that exactly, kind of thing, yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying doing the part. And probably when I people hope I give her justice. And know? when people come to see this show, they will be able to relate. That they'll know somebody just like your character, won't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's one on every block, you know? Yeah, definitely. Like the Falls Road and the Shankill Road, both run from the city centre parallel with one another, just a few hundred yards separating them. And we brought him went over to the shankle and, and done our mess, got our messages. My Aunt Maureen always thought the shops were far better over there. Yet Kay's Corner, children's clothes shop, sold the most gorgeous christening outfits you ever seen. Then we'd get our meat from Mr. Holm the Butchers, top of Conmore Street. He wore glasses. And a white coat always covered in blood. And here he had a wooden stump for a hand. And there I'd be looking at him with this big chopper coming down on the meat. 
And I often wondered if it wasn't him cut his own hand off with one big knife. Then before I got over home, I'd call in to Beatty's chip shop and get a pasty supper. Tell us about some of the research you did for this because you actually went on one of the tours around West Belfast and around Bombay Street, we did. didn't you? We, we went to Bombay Street and we were given uh, a tour um, by uh, Spike Murray, who's actually going to be doing one of the question and answer sessions with Lawrence McKeown, who a playwright. Spike was telling us about how before 69, when they were young lads uh, on Bombay Street and, and, and around the falls, they would be kicking ball in the wasteland with the young ones from the Shankill, no, no bother. Um, so everybody mixed together and that was all absolutely fine until the summer would come. And then there'd be this kind of unspoken rule nearly that people didn't mix over the summer months. And then come September, they'd all be, you know, yeah. hanging around together again. Uh, but obviously not after uh, 69. But uh, because then the peace wall, yeah. went up and he, he was explaining how it went up in, in stages for, for protection on either side. And what is lovely in the play is that we hear from Rosie's uh, description of the time, again, how it was before the peace walls were up. And I think you do get a sense in the play of what it was like before and then how things changed. Yes, yeah. Mm. Rosie, obviously you were there in 1969. What, what was your memories of that particular year? While I lived in North Belfast, um, I, I don't remember Bombay Street, but I certainly remember all the houses being burned in North Belfast and my sister was put out of her house um, on the other side of the Crumlin Road and that. And I could identify totally with everything that happened there. Yeah. Exactly the same feelings. All yeah. right. So Rosie and Mary, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. It's a show that I'm looking forward to seeing. 28th of May is the opening date, isn't it? 28th of May at the MAC until the 9th of June. And then there'll be a tour and then be a week at the Roddies in, in August. But all the details will be on the Brassneck website. Time now for some live music. And Benedict Morris and Cormac Crummy have just released a brand new album called Wavelength. We're going to find out all about it in just a second. But here's a live track from the guys themselves. Thank you. 
So that's a track called Monica's from Benny and Cormac who join me now in the studio. Guys, welcome. Tell us a story behind that song. So that was uh, that was three tunes that we, we first put together when we met like four years ago. Uh, we met at the Flacco on the Erin in 2014 uh, in Sligo and uh, we met through friends and we just started playing music together um, at sessions uh, throughout the week. And after that, uh, like we just enjoyed playing with each other so much that uh, we decided to, to meet up more regularly. I'd travel to, to Belfast, Cormac would travel to Glasgow and, um, and, and, we, and we just came up with music and, and that was it really. So since the two of you are based in two separate countries, is it difficult to get together and organise time and stuff? It is, yeah. It's a, it's a challenge, but um, I think we're both so committed to uh, to this this band and to, to the music that we make um, that it's it's no it's no problem to, to make the time to come over to rehearse um, to gig or to to kind of promote ourselves or whatever. So it's it's good. It is a challenge, but it's it's good. It's worth it. Yeah. So Cormac, it's take, taking quite a few years to get the first album out, yeah. hasn't it? Why did it take so long? Um. Well, kind of. It just kind of from the first time that we met in that house. The first set on the the album is the first set that we actually played together. Right. More or less. Kind of. The last tune was added once Benny had written it. Um. But since then, it was kind of it. We didn't. It wasn't something that we wanted to rush. It was something that we wanted to kind of come together organically. So. So the, the album is out now and it's been very well received, hasn't it? Yeah, uh, so we released it in 15th November and we launched it all across Belfast, Glasgow, Dublin. Yeah, it, it's, it's been really well received. It must be great for a debut album to sell out venues like Whelan's and stuff like that, yeah? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, I mean, to just to play uh, venues like the Duncairn and Whelan's itself um, was magic. They're both lovely, beautiful venues. Um, but to to get enough people and to get, like for for people to come and see to see your music and to sell out the venue is just like it was uh, it was amazing like the atmosphere for both gigs were incredible and especially for like a hometown gig um, in Belfast having so many of our friends and family there and having uh, just just a great night of music we had Cal Murphy who's the drummer in the band he was doing support as Homestead with his trio um, so it was just a really good atmosphere in the Dunkern which was lovely. So the album, it's out now. Um, is there more plans for gigs later on this year? Yeah, we've got a few things over the over the summer. Uh, we're playing a festival in, in Offaly in Forban. And uh, we're organising, uh, we're trying to organise a, a tour of the UK for the for the, the kind of later part of the year. Um, so that's it's kind of in the works. And Cormac, obviously you want to come back and play Belfast at some stage. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, I'm not sure, do we have any, we have no immediate plans for it, but a week we've started putting stuff together for a second album so once that's in the pipeline then we can maybe maybe do a like a, almost like a, a fundraiser to help help funds for the album yeah and then that'll help aid the album so so guys you're gonna do one more track before you leave us what are you gonna do uh we're gonna do another track off the album it's comprised of three uh, traditional irish tunes and it's called the grass bay great stuff well, guys thank you for coming in so here we go ladies and gentlemen one more time here's benny and cormac live on nvtv
Now, the family's first awards recognise local people and businesses who have done great things to help their local community. And the family's first awards took place at Titanic Belfast recently, and I was there. Here's what happened. We're here in Titanic Belfast tonight for the Family's First Awards and for people who don't know anything about the awards, tell us what are the Family's First Awards and how did it all come about? Okay, two questions there. How did it come about? Quite by accident. Uh, through our other businesses that my daughter Jenny and I were involved in, people kept contacting us and asking us, we're moving into the area, what's a good primary school, what's a good childminder, or who's a good childminder, should I say, daycare. And then the list went on and people were saying, well, my mummy looks after my wee ones, and I love to give my mummy an award. That's how it came about. And what are they? We're looking for the excellent, the most excellent. We're looking for the extraordinary and the ordinary. The teacher that stands out. The, the mother that goes the other mile. We have mothers here, our grandmothers here tonight who look after their daughter's children because their daughters can't. Dads, amazing children. Children with extraordinary stories, amazing teachers, head teachers, daycares. We look, we find the little gems there. So, how many people have you got here tonight? And tell us about some more of the different categories on offer tonight. We have around 450 people here tonight. Um, different categories are things like child of endeavour, uh, child superstar. We have things from primary school teachers right through to Mum of the Year, Dad of the Year, and our new Gold Star Award as well. Now we've found our first family to talk to. I'm going to go to Dad first of all. Tell us your name and where you're from. Hi, my name's Andrew and I'm from Lisburn. Brilliant. So what brings you to the family's first awards tonight then? My daughter has been uh, nominated for an award. Which award? Uh, uh, Child of Endeavour. Child of Endeavour. So this is her down here. What's your name? Angelina. And uh, you've got a lovely sash on you there. What's all that about? Uh, Northern Ireland. Stone face in Northern Ireland in April. All right. So. What all does that entail then? Um, it's a wee pageant and she's been raising money for two charities, Cancer Focus and Headway East Kent. Brilliant. All right. Well, the best of luck with the awards and have a fabulous evening. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your company then. Well, Joe Jingles is a music movement company for preschool children and we work up to like Key Stage 1 and it's all very educational. We work with mum's classes, we, the parents bring their children along and also in nurseries and primary one. And what does it mean to you guys to be nominated for a Family's First Award tonight then? It's, it's brilliant and actually I'm not the nominee, this girl has, has been nominated, but I work alongside her. Um, we've been working together for years, um, it's, it's great. So is this your first time at the awards then? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So tell us about your company then. Um, we are in the village of Article, just outside of Coleraine. Um, we have space for 78 children a day. Um, it's a very spacious, bright, uh, purpose-built nursery. And um, we just work with parents who work uh, shifts or have, um, we offer some flexibility. So um, that, that's what makes us really special. It's good to get recognition for our work, you know, as a team, and uh, it's fabulous because we, um, our aim is to present the best daycare that we can and children are priority. I started off as a teacher and uh, opened a small crash and uh, expanded over the years, and near, almost seven years later we have now um, over 200 children under our care and wow. love it. We run um, a group for children up to the age of 18 with um, any disability at all, an IEP, um, domestic violence, um, autism, ADHD, Down syndrome, anything at all um, where children struggle. We organise days out, events, um, parent training, everything. Started from a bouncy castle and now we have a group of fantastic mums who help us out and 
without the mums we wouldn't be here, so. And it's time now for our What's On Guide, where we take a look and see what's happening throughout Belfast and beyond over the next week or so. And we're starting off at the Grand Opera House, and based on a true story, Gary Barlow and Tim Firth's award-winning musical comedy Calendar Girls continues until the 25th of May. And of course, Calendar Girls is inspired by the true story of a group of ladies who decide to appear nude for the Women's Institute calendar in order to raise funds to buy a settee for their local hospital in memory of one of their husbands. Science's greatest and most volatile live show is returning with a vengeance. Join Brainiac Live at the Waterfront Hall on the 25th of May for loads of mind-blowing experiments, daredevil stunts and plenty of fun with the Brainiac Gang. The Elvis Spectacular Show comes to the Island Arts Centre in Lisburn on the 25th of May. And now, in its 22nd year, this show really is the ultimate Elvis experience from multi-award winning European champion Kieran Houlihan, together with his eight-piece live TCB band and the Sweet Sensations. British folk rock musicians Fairport Convention have been making great music for over 50 years and they'll be making a return to Belfast at the Lyric Theatre on the 26th of May. And also joining them on the night will be the four of us. Rich Hall's Hoedown comes to the Mac on the 29th and 30th of May and you'll recognise him from his BBC4 documentaries Countryer Than You and Presidential Grudge Match plus guest appearances on QI. So join Rich Hall for a night of stand-up comedy and improvised ballads. And finally for now, if you want to catch something in cinemas this weekend, then why not try Rocket Man starring Taron Egerton? And it's the story of Elton John's life from his years as a prodigy at the Royal Academy of Music through to his influential and enduring musical partnership with Bernie Taupin. There are moments in a rock star's life that define who he is. Where there was darkness, there is now you. And it's going to be a wild ride. Right, Action Ability Belfast are making a return to the stage at the Grand Opera House this coming June with a brand new show called When Will I Be Famous? We're going to find out all about that and all about uh, the charity itself because uh, Joe McNally joins me in the studio. Joe, how are you, sir? I keep very well, Robin. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, this time last year, we were getting ready for the show Bohemian Bap City, which um, I had the pleasure of playing the narrator in. We had lots of fun. And uh, you're back with a new show this year called When Will I Be Famous? Yeah. Tell us all about this one. Well, again, Robin, thank you very much for um, accepting the challenge again to be on our radar, which is, which is absolutely brilliant, because you know the, the kind of show this is and the, and the fun and the mayhem that it is. Well, we come up with the, a new idea for the show um, based on the current boy bands and girl bands and the old boy bands and girl bands from the, the 90s and, and the noughties. And we decided, right, let's, the, some of the music was great. Some of the music of the Space Girls, Girls Aloud, um, Take That, Boyzone, and right up to date with One Direction. Um, and that's, that's where it is. So we decided to, to, to kind of use them kind of songs as the premises for building, building the story behind the song, the, the, the show and the songs. And what we basically do is we use each song as a scene and we kind of, kind of completely re-script what, what actually happened. So say we go back to 1993 where Boy Zone, well we take that first scene with Boy Zone and we make up our own kind of story about it, about whatever song we're doing with it. We, as you know Robin, what we do is we have our own twist on things. It's comedy, it's fun, it's mayhem. And that's <laughs> what the whole show is all about. Um, and we have two, two characters, I don't want to say too much about it because it'll spoil it for the, the people coming to see it. We have two characters in the show who actually take 
um, the cast back in time to, to each of the years they go back to. So it's an amazing show, very, very funny. It must be a little nerve wracking because it's not just any old stage you put these shows on. You're in Northern Ireland's premier theatre, the Grand Opera House. Yeah, I think the the cast and ourselves have kind of grown grown into it and a big thank you to the grand opera house for for continually supporting us over the years that they have you know from our first show there right up right up to now this is our sixth show um and the wonderful thing about it is that the guys feel at home there now yeah. you know it's just like this 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 is their this is their stage they've grown in confidence i mean i would say the first show that we did yeah there was nerves we were all very very nervous the whole cast the whole the whole crew but i think as it's gone on we have just developed such a bond and such a trust with the guys it's kind of like the manager who puts his football team out onto the pitch yeah. you know he puts his trust in them and it's the same with these guys we yeah. know that what we what we do behind the scenes they go out they sell the show. Give us some background on Action Ability. Mm -hmm. How did it all start? How did it all come about? Well, I'm with Action Ability Belfast now um, 17 years this year. Um, when I first um, <clears throat> became employed with, the, with, with Action Ability, the name was Action on Disability. And our new manager, Liz Gracie, came in and there was a lot of change. And we thought about the, the name and everything else. And we changed the name to Action Ability Belfast. Hence, going for the name, I concentrate on pe people's ability yeah. rather than the disability, which is, uh, which is what we do. Um, we have various services. We have a floating support service. We have befriending and advocacy. We have um, a care support, um, volunteer support. We have everything um, for people with a disability. And what, what we try to do is to make people with a disability feel part of their community and build their confidence to become part of the community. We've even had some of our volunteers and some of our service users who have come through our service and are now volunteers. And actually some of them now are working as workers in befriending and various other things. So that's what we're about. We're about working together with people with a disability, helping them reach their goal, bringing them to where they want to go. That's what it's about. Of course, action ability is the day job for you as well. Yeah. But uh, by night time, you're a popular entertainer on the circuit as well. Aren't I am you? indeed. I'm a, I'm a professional musician and a songwriter and producer. And that's that's another little bit of bit, bits and pieces that I do as well. Yep. So I bring that in to, to the show. So I'm able to, to bring the musical skills and, and add that to the show as well. So which is which is a great help. All right, so give us all the details then. When Will I Be Famous comes to the Grand Opera House when? It is on Tuesday the 25th of June and you can get your tickets uh, at the Grand Opera House box office. Brilliant. Well, Joe, thank you so much for joining us. And um, I can't wait to be joining you guys on stage in Look, June. Looking forward to it, Robin. And anybody out there who watches this, come and see the show. You will be amazed. Thank you. So that's all we have time for on the big show this week. A big thank you to all my guests. And once again, to play us out this week, something live from Paul Cahalan. See you next week. Baby, come on, baby, I don't mind They kiss me like that, I just don't like They talk about, they talk about, they talk about me But it don't mean anything to me So, oh, oh, oh They can talk all night So, yeah, yeah But I don't care anymore about them So kiss me when they look around Kiss me when they look around So bring it on, bring it on, bring it to me You think that you're better than me I see, I see, I see your disguise You're just unhappy with your life So oh, oh, oh They can't talk all night So gay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't care anymore about them so kiss me when they look around So kiss me when they look around So kiss me when they look around So kiss me when they look around
can talk all night. So yeah, yeah, and I don't care anymore about them. So kiss me when they look around. 